little photo of my grandchild. My first grandchild. I have three grandchildren. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put that right there. So that's me with my daughter and her grandchild. Her, or sorry, her daughter. Yeah, her grandchild. Let's not push it. There's me. Now, if you don't want to see this grid, you can basically change the opacity. And there you go. So that's me. That's Piper and that's Taylor. So my first grandchild is going to be four this summer. So this was taken uh, coming back from a trip from Hawaii. If I can just drop a little name here, I actually went to Carlo Santana and Cindy Blackman's wedding in Hawaii in 2010. And on the way home, there was a major snowstorm, blizzard. We got stuck in L.A. for a week, and that gave me the opportunity to spend time with my daughter and grandchild. Now, here's the cool part. Okay, so if I go back to my 768, boom, it automatically resizes that image. Now, here's how images work. It's not going to make it make the image bigger than what the original image was. So if I go to my desktop version as an example, if I hit the command minus key to zoom way, way, way out, and I increase the size of this to say my default size, maybe I want to make my default size, I'm going to hit the plus symbol. So if you want to make your default size, say this size here, which is basically 2,000 pixels wide for a big, huge, wide monitor, which you could do, notice that I can't make this bigger than what the original photo was. This photo is 1,280 pixels wide. So if in fact you want to have a gargantuan photo for your uh, big, huge 32-inch, 42-inch widescreen, then you'd have to downsize from there. So notice how I did that. So now I simply have the photo, and I'm going to hit Command-0, Command-0 to fit window. So here again, here's my 320 size, here's my 768 size, and here's my full desktop size. And again, it did it for me. No hand coding, it knew to rewrite the size of that. So again, if I go to View, Preview in Chrome, and again, the shortcut is Command F12, Control F12 for Windows. And just like that. So here's my size. I guess I need to shave there too. But she's, she's basically a mini, mini me. My daughter, my daughter's actually better looking than I am. So fortunately, my grandchild got, got my uh, daughter's looks, not mine. So now it's basically resizes down. How cool is that? So again, I didn't have to write code for that. It did it for me. So my objective with this course, in any course that I teach, in relation to any software program, which I teach a lot of software, I teach Maya, 3D Studio Max, Final Cut, Adobe Edge, uh, Adobe Premiere, mainly Adobe products because that's what I started out with, but that's no excuse. I mean, I teach anything that's menu-based that's graphically or video or motion graphic or special effect oriented. I know those programs and I teach those programs. So again, the way that this program thinks here is it's going to create div tags for you and it's going to write the code for you, the HTML code, plus the media query code needed to basically build these files. So let's go and open this up inside of Dreamweaver and I will show with you, share with you the files that are created. Now, what you need to understand is if you want the most current version of that HTML written, you do have to go and preview that inside of your Chrome browser. So that gives the most current version to that updated version of the Adobe uh, Reflow uh, application. So here we are in uh, Adobe, Adobe Dreamweaver. Yeah, I think I know this program kind of well. We'll kind of stumble through here. Just kidding. All right, so I'm going to go to File, Open, Open File, Navigate my way through the files kept, which I, of course, I put in websites inside of Adobe Edge Reflow and Client Comp 1. So what this does is this makes assets folder, and the assets folder is what contains the CSS boilerplate and the media careers, which are inside the reflow.css. I'm going to click this file right here and open it up, and it puts the images that I used inside of there. So the JPEG file, whatever JPEG file I use, it puts it inside the images file. Therefore, those files would, of course, have to be published to your browser. So I'm going to double click and open this up. Now, again, what it did, it's, it's totally, totally, uh, you know, simple, I guess is the word. It's brainless. It's pretty straightforward. It wrote two CSS files for you. This is the boilerplate CSS file that was written by these guys, which, uh, you know, nice guys, good, they know what they're doing. 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then in addition to that, it created the reflow. Now, if I could share that with you for a second, the reflow wrote. Now, here's where it's one thing I don't like about the program, if I could be so candid. But again, this is going to change with subsequent uh, uh, versions and updates. Again, this version of the software is still in preview. So one thing I don't like is that everything is called a box, box one, box two, box three. It uses ID tags, not HTML5 semantic tags. So I just want to share that with you. But it doesn't do a great job in writing the media query. So if I want to view this inside of Dreamweaver as an example, now it does say that the code was specifically generated and it will work 100% inside of Chrome, but I tested basically the code it writes inside different browsers and it does work 100%. I haven't seen any glitches so far. So that's probably just a little statement to kind of cover their butt over at Adobe. So I click right here, that's gonna give my full screen. If I click here, that is my iPad size. If I click here, of course, that gives me my phone size, which in this particular case, would even create a separate media query for 480. However, if I do go down to 320, then there's my new size. So how cool is that? So again, this program is a great, great program, but the thing I don't like about it is how it constructs its CSS, but that's something you'd have to change. And of course, I go into great detail on a simplistic, easy, point and click way to do that in my full complete series on this software program. So my name is Robert Farrell. I appreciate you being here very much. A couple things I'd like to share with you before you leave. First of all, if you're new to Udemy, I highly suggest going to udemy.com. Now, of course, I want you to sign up for my courses, but there's a lot of great courses and a lot of great courses for free from other instructors that you really benefit from. Uh, sales and marketing and how to basically, uh, I don't know if there's anything about how to play a guitar, but I think that's coming soon. But all kinds of topics. In fact, there's one from Mark Zuckerberg back when he was at Harvard, uh, which, has got, which has a big response. You know, thousands and thousands of people watch that. And that's free too on udemy.com. But one thing I want to share with you is if you go to udemy.com to this URL, and I have a link to it down on the bottom, this is my all access bundle. Now, for some of you, you might think, well, that sounds like a lot of money. But right now, I'm running a special for 63% off. So, what does that mean? If I click right here, you can get this bundle for $649. Now, a lot of you might think, well, that's a lot of money too, $649. Well, I would like to think that my master techniques, and again, Right now, I have roughly about 25 courses on udemy.com. All topics, all subjects, all different types of software. So if you do the math on that, in fact, let's actually do the math on that. So if you do the math on that, what we have going on here, let's say that you sign up on somebody else, I won't mention any name, but somebody else's course that maybe charged, oh, 375 bucks a year. Well, 375 a year times in five years, you're going to be spending $1,800. Now, Again, you know, apples and oranges here, but some courses enable you to do, like there's other, you know, people out there who do training and they charge you, I don't know, 20 bucks a month. Well, 20 bucks a month times 12 is 240. Well, 240 is still cheaper than my 649, but guess what? Year after that, year after that. So in five years, you're gonna be spending $1,200. So my course gives you complete access, lifetime access, now, next month, next year, five years, 10 years. So in 10 years from now, when Adobe comes up with CS, you know, whatever, CS25, you're covered, okay? Now that's also considering that I haven't, you know, uh, retired and moved to, uh, to Belize or, uh, or my favorite European city, Ghent, in Belgium. Well, I don't think that's gonna happen. So I just wanna share with you that my all access pass. Now for those of you that can't afford even that, then basically look at my other courses. My courses, I have courses and special deals running from $29 to $99. And I also have a lot of free courses on udemy.com. So thank you very much. And the most important thing too is to go and read my student reviews. My students love what I do. I have the highest rated per capita. And I just wanna share this with you. I probably don't have the most amount of viewers because I've only been on Udemy for about six months. But for the past four months, I've been the number two best-selling uh, 
uh, teacher on Udemy.com. In fact, I can now, I can officially say that I am the best-selling Adobe teacher on Udemy.com. This month, February of 2013, I am the second best all-time seller on Udemy.com. Now, there's a person who, with all credit, he does these technical courses for Microsoft products, which is something that I don't teach, and I wish him the best, and I have great success, but I can't seem to catch up to him. But with your help, hopefully I can. Anyway, my name is Robert Farrell. Thank you very much for being here. And I have a new channel that I have no subscribers yet on YouTube. On YouTube. So if you want to be some of the first subscribers, I will, I will tease you with a couple of little cool things I will do for, say, the first 100 subscribers to my new channel, which is YouTube.com, Think Adobe Web. So I'm, even though I'm still going to keep up my Adobe.com Think Dreamweaver YouTube channel, I just want to be more uh, generic. I want to start doing more videos that include all the other Adobe software programs. And sometimes if you just call something Dreamweaver, people get very, very confused. So again, thank you very much for being here. My name is Robert Farrell. Hey, do something nice for somebody today in your neighborhood or a neighbor or a friend or a homeless person because I did something nice for you. So thank you very much, Robert Farrell. I'm out of here, Carpe Diem 2013. Have a good day.